autism is not caused by vaccines. The science is settled. If you look it up on Wikipedia, it'll say there is no known cause of autism. It's most likely genetic, possibly environmental. There's no known cure. But there's one thing that Wikipedia does emphasize over and over again. It's a myth that vaccines are a cause of autism. I have to give a disclaimer here because YouTube has policies. If something conflicts with medical consensus, it's considered misinformation. However, YouTube does give you an exception to that. If you want to cover opposing viewpoints or your own opinions and you back it up with research, potentially they won't take the video down. I am not going to conclude for you. I'm just going to give you a series of pieces of information and you can make up your own mind. With all these controversial topics, there's always opposing viewpoints, right? Because you have like Dr. Paul Offit. He's an advocate for vaccines for children and he's a critic of the anti-vaccine movement. Then of course you have Anthony Fauci who also says that there's no evidence between autism and vaccines. And then between 2010 and 2021, Fauci received 58 royalty payments directly from vaccine research. So there's two main things I'm going to talk about. Uh, number one is the myth that autism comes from vaccines because it's been disproven and there's no research. I'm going to cover that. And then number two, there's no cure for autism. There's advocates that are telling us that a cure is even dangerous and autism is normal. Let's first talk about what we really know about autism. We know that there's a much higher level of inflammation in the brain with autism. And I'm going to put some links down below from the research done by Dr. Coembre, who's a neurologist. So the data that he found in autism is that there's chronic inflammation that's not related to a microbe or a pathogen. One study showed that 70% of autistic children had higher levels of autoimmune diseases, which is really interesting. But what's even more interesting about that, a vaccine given to a person does not create an adequate immune response unless you also add something to that vaccine. And that thing that's added to the vaccine is called an adjuvant. Aluminum compounds are the most commonly used vaccine adjuvants. Research shows that aluminum is toxic on multiple levels. It is a neurotoxin. The neurotoxicity of aluminum typically manifests in learning, memory, concentration, and speech deficits. So the question arises, what makes the brain particularly susceptible to aluminum toxic impact? When you get an injection with this adjuvant aluminum, it goes up into and it crosses the blood-brain barrier with the help of an immune cell triggered by repeated exposure of unexpectedly long persistence of aluminum adjuvants in the human body. Now that's all very interesting, but now I have to show you something on this page right here. What we're looking at on this page is from 1980 to 2023, okay? And we're looking at the autism rate in the United States. There was one in 10,000 people in the US. And the number of vaccine doses went up to 12 with aluminum exposure 4X more than 250. So we got a thousand micrograms. 10 years later, now we have one in 150 people getting autism. And at that time, we went up doubling from 12 to 24 number of vaccine doses by age six with more than doubling the aluminum exposure to 2,500 micrograms of aluminum. Now, 23 years later in 2023, one in 36 kids are diagnosed with the most aggressive vaccine schedule in history with 49 vaccine doses by age six with an aluminum toxicity exposure of 5,000 micrograms. Now, I'm not telling you what to conclude from this. I'm just giving you the data. The FDA Department of Health and Human Services requires limits on aluminum in parental feeding solutions that require warning labels about potential aluminum hazards, yet sets no safety limits or required warnings for aluminum in vaccines. I would love to ask uh, some of these medical experts that are pro-vaccine to help me understand how 5,000 micrograms are safe for a child under the age of six. The consequence of this view is best reflected in the fact that a large number of vaccine trials use an aluminum adjuvant containing 
placebo, or other aluminum-containing vaccines as the control group. When you do an experiment, a control group is a group that doesn't get the treatment. So that way you have something to compare it to, right? So guess what? In the studies using this adjuvant aluminum in vaccines, the control group that's not supposed to be getting the aluminum is getting the aluminum. So right there, that completely cancels out those studies that did that. And also the data, when you look at countries that don't have such a aggressive vaccine schedule, do not have significant trending autistic diagnoses. Even in the Amish community, which is unvaccinated, they have extremely low diagnosis of autism. There are certain genes that could put a, a child more at risk for developing autism, no doubt. And so the combination of the aggressive vaccine schedule with the amount of aluminum in an individual that's vulnerable because their genetics are predisposed to having autism, that could be the perfect storm. I personally think that before anyone is given a vaccine, if they could look at their genetics to see if they're vulnerable, then they can have a better choice on who's more at risk than others. So I'm gonna give you Dr. Cornbury's protocol and then right after I give you Dr. Cornbury's protocol, I'm going to show you uh, a clip of him speaking about this topic. So the number one thing that he'll give someone is vitamin D3 in higher amounts, 10,000 IUs. High levels of vitamin D3 help to uh, create a calming effect of an overactive immune system. We have a hypersensitive immune reaction in the brain, interrupting the normal function of the brain. So vitamin D, number two, Propolis. This is something that related to what bees make. Propolis greatly helps regulate a dysfunctional immune system, and it's a very potent anti-inflammatory for the brain. But the third thing is probably the most important thing, and it's an oral silica supplement. And the one that Dr. Columbre recommends is called monomethyl cilantrol. And he'll give uh, between 100 to 200 milligrams of the silica three times a day. And if the child also has hyperactivity, he will add to this protocol four grams of glycinate, which calms down the nervous system. Now, he'll also make some adjustments on that. If the child is too sleepy during the day, he'll cut that down a little bit because it does make you very calm. And I'm going to recommend that you put your child on a, a low carb diet. So then the brain can start increasing ketones. And I also think that will support the brain, but I'm not making any claims. This is all theory. Go ahead and make up your own mind. But now check out this clip from Dr. Coimbre. When you inject aluminum in the vaccines, aluminum is not eliminated by the kidneys. It remains in our organism. It is within the immune cells and it enters the brain carried by the immune cells. There is a lot of research by Christopher Axley, and he has shown that uh, in the brains of uh, people who died, they had uh, autism, and they found uh, high levels of aluminum in the brain tissue. They went to the University of Oxford in England, and they got samples from the brains of uh, patients that had autism when they died. And they could see in the microscope that there were lots of uh, mm -hmm. nanoparticles of aluminum. It's amazing to see the number of, uh, of vaccines and how people just accept that as something being normal. I've been treating autism since uh, 2014. I was in high doses of vitamin D. In a way, uh, autism is an autoimmune disorder. And in another way, it's also a manifestation of toxicity caused by uh, this uh, aluminum. It causes a lot of uh, abnormal metabolic changes. Every now and then, I received uh, uh, patients, uh, their children are adolescents, and I was amazed to see the number of children and adolescents there are depressed nowadays, committing suicide. And this is increasing as the, in the same rate that autism is increasing. So at some point, uh, I received here a MS patient and her daughter was uh, 17 year old. The patient told me that uh, when she was only four years old, she was so depressed. That child had to take a uh, antidepressant drugs. And because that girl was born in 2006, 
when she was receiving lots of vaccines containing aluminum, I decided to give her silica. That substance binds to aluminum and both silica and aluminum are eliminated by the kidneys. And uh, she came back uh, a year later and she said that her depression uh, was almost gone. She mm. said that she was 85% uh, better and uh, her psychiatrist was uh, decreasing the drugs that she was taking. The psychiatrist uh, thought that she, maybe she was no longer uh, needing uh, the, all those medications. You see, this is a, a tip of an iceberg. I'm going to put all that information down below, but I really appreciate this interview. This has been very enlightening, and I think this is going to help a lot of people. I really appreciate you sharing this information. It's been extremely valuable. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to pass that information. Absolutely.